if I had known of coaching at the time, and I think it would be easier for other people to include their dreams into their professional life if they have coaching around them to make the link between the work and the professional career, uh, whether it's you work in an office, whether you work on a construction site or in a lab or you traveling, you're doing experiment outside. All right. So while we still have the participant pouring in and joining us for our conversation, let me share what is it that we're going to do this month and specifically today. So our theme for this month is challenging the status quo. And why we took this topic is because we think that coaching is uh, intervention which is not just for learning but it's in a huge way an aid to challenging the status quo it helps bring in the transformation necessary and just before beginning the session today i was having a little chit chat with crystal and dr bill you would also have the same experience just a few days back we had a huge internet outage all across canada i don't know if you were affected dr bill no oh lucky no. you <laughs> yep and so you know how countrywide you know for entire 24 hours there was no internet and can you imagine how it would be what sort of thoughts would have come to people's minds and how we would have all been struggling and Crystal made a very important point. She said that we come from a generation who have lived considerable amount of life without internet. Like we grew up without internet. Internet came into our lives when we were pretty much adults and were getting to go into the work space. And how we sort of gotten used to of, of it. And this sudden disruption sort of brought into our awareness the status quo we've set ourselves into. So with this theme, we would like to discuss a little more about status quo and invoke and try to trigger certain questions in your awareness as to so that you can look into, you know, where in your life you've set into a mold that you need to break out from. And for that, we have got today with us uh, Crystal and Dr. Bill Henson, who in their own respective way, who are both coaches, by the way, but their backgrounds are so unusual, which you don't hear uh, in the coaching fraternity. So without talking much about it, I would like to hand on the space to both of you to take time and just tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and what really got you into the coaching. Uh, Crystal, can we begin with you? Okay, thank you, Koma. So I've actually worked in the construction industry for 25 years. Uh, I worked in uh, different positions, different countries, different type of construction project, uh, in different languages too, and for different type of companies. And I liked it. Uh, it the industry provided me with uh, enough changes in the type of work I was doing in the location to keep my interest going for a while. Obviously, there were ups and downs as of for everybody, but I really got to a stage where it just wasn't enough for me anymore. Um, I really needed a different type of change. I needed to go back to, I would say, my childhood dreams, some of them at least. And I realized I wasn't in the right environment anymore for who I was at the time. So I, I went into a phase where I was unhappy and fulfilled and satisfied trying to figure out what else can I do with my life. So I went on a what I called an exploration journey. I watched, I read, I listened to, I spoke to people, I did different type of training. I did a mentoring uh, program and I discovered life coaching. And that's that was it. That was the... This is what I need. This is, this is really about me finding my own solution within myself. 
rather than following somebody else's solution, which is not ad adapted to who I am. So I went to look for life coaches on the internet um, and I didn't find anyone who had a background I could relate to. And that was very important to me because as I said before, I wasn't in a good place at the time. So I wasn't ready to just keep trying different people uh, just to see who, would, who I would connect with. I really wanted a connection from before doing the first call. So I decided to, do, to, to look at life coaching training for myself. You know, if I can't find anybody to support me, I'll try to support myself. And I really enjoy that life coaching training. Uh, the, I would say the, the key word that I like about life coaching, it's support, it's partnership, it's empowerment. And I, I just love those words. And that gave me the idea that there probably was a market for people like me. So people, uh, I mean, more specifically women in construction, women in STEM who needed a life coach, but who needed somebody who could relate to them. Um, at least from the first approach to make it easier to make the first step. And that's why I'm sort of specializing in um, empowering women in STEM and in construction to create the life and career they want. So that's a brief introduction of what I did for 25 years and how I got into coaching. Awesome. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Bill. Thank you, Kamal. Um, so my my journey is um, is, is pretty different in in um, in that um, veterinarians as a rule are are we're all kind of like the MacGyver types where we do it all we we take all that work on ourselves and early on in my career <clears throat> I think the norm was just you know work hard keep your head down um, you know buy a business grow a business. Uh, learn the business. So, you know, you, you do everything, payroll, hiring, firing, hopefully you don't have to do that very often, but, but, but um, leadership, all of these little skills that you learn along the way and over a long career in a couple of hospitals and, you know, seeing, um, you know, probably 30 or 40 doctors, sort of, you train them up, you move them out. Some of them went on to specialization and, you know, you start to get a, a real sense for the industry and you, you start to really know how it ticks and how it works. But um, as, I, as I kind of approached near the end of my career, I, I, I think what helped me transition out of, of, of active practice, I'm, I'm still licensed, but I'm not actually in the in the in the practice anymore um, was was just that I was having to travel back and forth and and I was <laughs> my rear end was getting tired of of the seat of my car so I started to think hmm, I still have gas in the tank what do I want to do with myself and I thought you know um, I've learned a lot over the years I've I've learned a lot especially about leadership and and I think that um, Coaching uh, seemed to be a good fit. And, and as it turns out, most of the things in life happen by chance. And my brother-in-law, you know, suggested, you know, I contact somebody about this executive coaching program. And the next thing I knew I was, you know, uh, ankle deep in that. And, and at first it didn't make a lot of sense, but then I think once I started to really, um, embrace the whole topic of coaching and understand it a little bit more because my world was very advice driven. Like that's all I did all day. And, um, you know, having to keep my mouth shut and not provide answers and, you know, do this and do that and move on to the next patient sort of thing. Um, once I kind of got through that, I started to see through a little bit more. Um, and, and so I think that's what attracted me to coaching is just that I have lots of knowledge um, and and I want to help other people kind of gain that knowledge but I also have spent a lot of time as I'm sure we all have on on building our own uh, emotional intelligence and our emotional uh, resilience so I think you need a lot of that as well to um, to be able to partner well with with people that are 
in my industry kind of hurting at the moment. So that's kind of my story. Wow, you know, I'm sort of caught by a blind side of mine and pardon me for that because when I hear the word veterinarian, all that I could figure out in my mind is, is somebody with uh, animals, you know, maybe pet animals or wild animals, just like a dog whisperer or a cat whisperer, <laughs> the kind. Mm. I, I didn't process it in my mind that it would take a lot of coordination, management, organization, and all of those kind of things. I think the picture in my mind mm -hmm. was something different. So thank you for bringing me to the realities side of it. And uh, so, you know, there is such a similarity, like some personal notions, some personal urge within both of you got you into uh, the side of coaching, right? So can we take a moment and just think back and share with us like when you got into coaching and Dr. Bill you've also touched upon a, a, some point in there is that how did your introduction to the coaching sort of made you look at what you've been doing so far and what happened in that space in terms of a shift and how was it how was your experience was it easy difficult exciting tormenting whoever would like to take it this question first i'm happy to go <laughs> okay I would say for me it was discovering what i had been missing for a long time i've always from a very young age i've always wanted to um to be independent of, I mean, financially, yes, but also to have my own mind, to sort of create my own path, um, to have different experiences, to meet different people, to travel the world. Um, and I found it very hard because I am an introvert. I am a shy person. So I had to fight. There was an internal fight all the time. Do I really, do I dare to do that? Do I really want it enough to dare to do it? And um, it was hard for me to find support because I, I, even if I was to speak to other people, they would give me advice based on what they wanted, what worked for them, based on their own personality. It wasn't advice fitting to, to me, to what I wanted, to who I was. And so that's been a problem that I sort of identified, but I didn't know what to do with it. And when I found life coaching, it's, it was like a, a, a shift in my mind. This, this is what I need. Yes, mentoring, yes, uh, help is, is good from time to time. But what I want most is find my own ways. But knowing that thinking on my own, my own self-reflection at one point, you go and go around in circle in your own mind. It's having that person who knows the type of question to ask based on what you say, not based on, oh, this is a list of good questions to ask, or they've heard those kind of something. So it's their question, but based on you. It's, it always goes back to you as a coachee, and that's, that's really what attracted me to, to life coaching. And I actually found it quite easy to to train as a life coach. Uh, I mean, obviously I still have to you know, progress on it and there's always a lot to learn, but I've, I really felt connected to the process for myself and for others, if that answers your question. Yeah, I, I just have one follow-up question for you. Coming from the STEM and the construction industry and being exposed to a completely different environment, <clears throat> Was there anything within you when you decided to be a coach that you had to like remarkably shift and change? Yes, and, and the shift happened really because I was in that dark place and I knew I had to do something about it. I knew that just shifting to another type of work in the industry probably wouldn't be enough for me. Um, and I had done that in the past, so I knew what it was and I wasn't particularly afraid of it, 
because I've had the experience, I just needed a bigger shift. And the problem was to find where to go and what it is I could do without having to start from the, from the very bottom. And once I realized that the need for life coaching for people like, like me um, who find it hard to find relatable coaches, somebody they can, they can have a base connection with, that, that was a shift. Wonderful. Thank you. Dr. Bill. Uh, well, a lot of what uh, Christelle um, said so eloquently r resonates with me. Um, I think <clears throat> I, I call it the great unlearning for me. I, um, first of all, I'm, I'm also an introvert. And I got along great in my career because people brought their pets to me and, and um, so on. But I can recall being in class and, you know, feeling that trepidation as we went into breakout rooms. Oh, my God, what am I going to say? And how am I going to know anything? And everybody's smart and they're working in corporate and I'm not and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, am I in the right program? I was in an executive coaching school and all the rest, but it, it, I think as time went on, I, I, I started to realize that there were aspects of myself that I thought I knew really well that I didn't, that I needed to learn about me. And um, what I was really pleasantly surprised with was the level of cooperation and collegiality that I found within the coaching world, uh, even, you know, people, you know, help reaching out, wanting to help. And I wasn't used to that so much in my profession. We were all just a bunch of individuals, like, um, and I think that that really helped. And, and the, the, I think it's just easier at this stage of my life, at least to subtract things and, and get rid of things so that I've got a little bit more room to, to learn something new. And I felt a little bit like in Canada, we have like high school starts in grade nine and you go in and you're like the person that doesn't really know much and you have no say about anything and you're feeling a little out of sorts. And, and then as you move up, you, you start to get that confidence. And I, and I felt like that. And I thought, you know, do I really want to learn this? Is this so hard? I don't know. But um, I stuck with it. And I think sort of like what Christelle said, you know, like, and see where it goes. And so, um, so I've learned a tremendous amount. And I think one of the things that I've learned, Kamal, if I could just add one more thing, is that I've learned to, to stop and look back and, and go, okay, how far have I come? Instead of how much have I got to do? I'm, 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 I'm spending a little more time celebrating the fact that, okay, I've gone this far. I still have, you know, I've, I've got, I've got coaching clients and I'm doing what I want to do and not kind of where I need to be, you know, or, you know, that sort of thing. So, so, so that's helped helped as well. So I think it's just this whole pause and refresh thing. Um, there's just has been a lot I've had to kind of throw away. And I guess that's probably the biggest thing that's happened to me. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much, both. It's, uh, I'm sure so many people are resonating with what you're sharing and for our own journeys and also the journeys of our clients who go through that process with us in, in the coaching conversations. And I particularly like the analogy that you've given of the high school, like becoming the ninth grader in the high school and feeling in that space like, oh, I don't know anything or I know nothing, you know, even after having a lifelong journey and, you know, that how every new change, every status quo shift would look like, oh, you're back in the high school, sort of feel, feeling a little nervous, not confident about it. And I also like the question that you pose is like, how far have I come? Instead of, yes, we do have our goals and, you know, where we are going and where do we need to go? What is the goal? But how far we have come is both inspiring encouraging and also showing us like yes there is a forward momentum to what we have taken on to do on ourselves and i think that celebration is very very important 
So point taken for self and for our clients also, <laughs> that in their shifting of status quo, you know, celebration should be an integral part of it. Uh, I'll just take a quick note from our audiences who are uh, sharing. So Jen is saying, I'm finding that I'm moving from extrovert to being more introverted. Introverts, I have a book for you, Quiet. Uh, it is amazing validation on the value of introverts. Okay, thank you, Jen. <laughs> I'm, so, uh, I'm neither an introvert nor extrovert, but a middleword. That's amazing, Venkat. <laughs> That's a new term for us, the middle word. So let's move to a different question that I had for you is that now that you have a new lens of a coach or a new hat of a coach, when you look through that lens and look back at your experience or journey, all the industries that you've come from, how do you look at that now? What And where do you think, you know, some status quo need to be shaken, need to be challenged? And where do you see the potential and opportunities for change in those respective areas? I'll let Dr. Bill start this time. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, Kamal, that's a loaded question um, because what was considered the standard of a new graduate, for example, when I entered the workforce to what is now is really very, very different. Hmm. And all I can say is, and I don't know if people have watched the TV series James Harriet and 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 you know and it it, it is a lovely tale uh, of a of a country veterinarian who he basically looked like he never got tired he worked 24/7 he was on call all day and night you know always answering to the whims of the clients that happened to knock on the door or whatever it is. And, and that whole kind of mindset of, 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 you know, just being available and, 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 and this is my job, this is my world, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, um, has changed a lot. And, and, you know, I don't want to get into how it's changed, but I can just, all I can say is that it's, it's given me a lot of perspective in terms of why we're having so many problems now. And I think it's just kind of the sins of the father, you know, as, as things change in life, if, 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 if the work models and if, if the leadership and, and so on doesn't catch up to where things are really happening on the ground, then there's going to be this kind of clash. And, and, and um, so I look at my job experiences, I'm very blessed that um, I reinvented myself a whole bunch of times as I bumped into problems that I, oh my God, I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle that, um, but I'll find a way. And, and, you know, back then it was just, you know, you're tough through it. You, just push that overdrive button and you work hard and you whatever. And, and, you know, you didn't know about burnout and you didn't know about moral distress. You didn't know any of that. You just thought, Oh, this is part of the job and this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, and so I feel I have that perspective um, and maybe I just kind of leave it at that. Um, and, and I bring that into the present and, 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 and I can sort of see from my vantage point, maybe a little easier where I think things need to change. So I'll pass off to Christelle. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I would say looking back now, now that I'm in a better uh, mindset, uh, mental state than I was a few years ago, um, I would say I did achieve a lot going back to what Dr. Bill said and looking at what you've achieved rather than how much we still have to achieve, <laughs> looking at what you've done. And 
and I realized even though I choose to go into construction uh, from a, um, I followed a very practical elimination process when I had to decide what to study and what type of industry to get into. And I completely forgot my, or left put aside my childhood dreams of traveling the world and having different experiences. I realized that I actually did that through my experience. So it was still there somewhere because um, I've worked in different countries, different position, et cetera. And that's how I ended up in Canada. Um, but I think it would have been easier if, um, if I had known of coaching at the time. And I think it would be easier for other people to include their dreams into their professional life if they have coaching around them to make the link between the work and the professional career, uh, whether it's you work in an office, whether you work on a construction site or in a lab or you're traveling, uh, you're doing experiment outside. They're all structures that have kind of a way, that's the way we do things. And yet there's so many ways we could do it if we had the, if we felt empowered really to try something new. And I think looking back, I see that I tried to do some of that for myself um, with restriction, with challenges, my own challenges due to my own personality, challenges of working in an in, in, in an industry with not so much diversity, in particular gender diversity, but who's also, which is also quite traditional in its management and leadership style. So looking back, yes, I did good, uh, but I think coaching could bring so much more, could have brought me more, but could bring so much more to the people working now, especially the new generation who come in, uh, I mean, some people have never worked in an office yet. I have never really <laughs> had to wear work clothes. <laughs> um, it's, um, so there's a the looking back and see what, what coaching could have brought me, could, could have brought other people and what it could bring to the people, you know, in, in professional, in careers right now who don't work for themselves. Thank you. It's so interesting that both of you, when you are looking back from the current lens and you've spoken about certain values, right? Uh, like Crystal, picking up from you, you've, you've said that, and if I heard it correct and if I understood it correct, is that the interlinking of the personal value, personal dream and aspirations, and with the work that you're doing, like how you can sort of align both of them, had it been there in the beginning, then if, or what I also heard is that, that you did uh, uh, fulfill your personal values uh, of travel, but you just didn't notice it that yes, that's what I'm doing in the moment. There was that, and I think it was restricted, um, I did it when I really, really felt this is what I really, really need to do. And right. I will dare to take the step. It, it wasn't just one day I decided I'll resign and I'll go to Spain, learn Spanish and look for a job in Spain. It, it was a, full, a whole reflection process and a bit of preparation before doing that. And that is something I did, <laughs> but it wasn't... Um, it didn't happen in one day. There was a lot of reflection and do I dare, do I not dare to do it? Do I want it enough to take the risk? Um, so there was that, that permanent fight, which obviously makes, it, it means that things happen over a longer period of time. And it, it's internal stress too, because you're constantly fighting in your head <laughs> between what you want to do and the challenges. And it, it is stressful, it is, tiring but um it's it's um it's a success when you get through it whether you uh, i mean i didn't end up working in spain i ended up working elsewhere but going through the process was a success for me but it took a lot of energy a lot of time yeah so it was a permanent yeah. it was a, a constant it's a stress yeah 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 so the change happened the transformation happened but 
through a very, very stressful process, yes. stressful journey. And if we sort of bring coaching in that mix, then it's less stressful or or maybe not a stressful journey, but more of a learning and exciting journey to go along through transformation. Yeah, it does and, Yeah. And Dr. Bill, there was a very interesting point that you said about, like you said that, you know, I just went through it. I hustled because I didn't know burnout. I didn't know all of those things. That was the way of life. And so today we know quite a lot about these terms of burnout and exhaustion and all of that. What would you say to that? In, in a way, not knowing all of that sort of worked for you. Sort of, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. I, I think to, to sort of go back and, and this sort of also ties in with what Christelle is saying. Every time I needed to reinvent myself was one of those points where if I had a coach, I would have been able to connect my, you know, as coaches, we use the, you know, the meaning and the values and the purpose. I would have been able to reconnect, keep kind of those first and foremost in my life as I, as I transitioned through those dif difficult times. Um, and still a lot of work, but you're, you're going through it with more mindfulness. And, um, and I think that, that, that that was, I think when Christelle was talking, I, it made me think about that, that sometimes you, you go through things and you, you know, you just kind of hustle through them and you just kind of get it done, but you, you lose that connection with the moment. You, you, it's like all of a sudden you're on the other side, you go, oh, good, oh, good. I've got another problem, but that isn't bothering me so much anymore. And I figured it out kind of, um, and you hope that you figured it out or you hope you made a good decision um, because the whole concept of coaching and, and, and the, the whole concept of, 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 of self-help was just starting to really come aboard. But in my industry, it's still not very, very uh, well established. But, but that's kind of what came to mind with that. Um, I, you know, it's a little bit of a, of a, of a continuation of Christelle's answer, but I, I kind of think it's relevant that all of these little moments in time, boy, would I have ever appreciated having that. I mean, yeah, you have people you talk to, you know, you have, you have the odd person that you can have as a mentor, but, but a coach is very different. It's, it's just a different, um, a different, whole different paradigm. Yeah, I think I heard a, a coach once, and I don't remember the name, her name, uh, I think it was on an ICF webinar, who said that she, she saw coaching as she, as a coach, was walking along her coachee um, through their journey, so being uh, along with them, uh, and that goes back to support and, and partnering term rather than help. And I, I think, uh, carrying on with what Dr. Bill said, that having a coach when you're looking at changes, for example, just to support you in your reflection process and what you, why you want to do it, what's behind you wanting to make that change and understanding what is pushing you for that, to take that step, that risk, and maybe looking also at what happens if you don't take that, that step or that risk, you know, what are the risks of not taking <laughs> the other risk? Um, there's often something might happen in either way, good and bad. And just being able to, to reflect on that, having the right type of support that a friend may not be able to provide you with because they, they want what's good for you. So they'll, um, they might uh, push you with positivity or, or even toxic positivity, which is I think becoming a, a term now. Um, 
that's not what you want. You want to stay in the reality, you want your own, you want to be able to reflect while going in direction that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. And you want to better understand the link between who you are and what it is you want to do and why on earth you want to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. You know, I love the expression of positive toxicity. Toxic, toxic positivity. Toxic positivity, yeah. yeah. Uh, it will all, you know, be fine. Yeah, it's like too know. much of positivity, yes. And I relate to it in a way because I always feel that I've had people around me who have all been very, very, ni very nice it would all been very encouraging very positive and always sort of tried to show me oh this is what you do good and this is what you do very nice and all I crave for is somebody to come and tell me this is nonsense get over yourself do it right that is something that I haven't heard much from anybody around me and sometimes although it may sound like very rude and all but I think Sometimes we do need that realistic check for ourselves because otherwise we don't know uh, who we are in, in, in our shortcomings and our shortfalls. And I think sometimes uh, that is what is required for the shift. That is what is required for the change. Like, you know, you don't take yourself too seriously or too gradually and you say that, oh, yeah, I'm also human. I make mistakes. So thank you for bringing that point home. And uh, I am also reading through the chat box and there are, you know, people relating to what you're saying and Jean is saying, I love the realistic check. Yeah, because reality is is pretty important for challenging the status quo and shift. Nick is saying coaching might be criticized in this age of catastrophic change to be too focused on the individual. I'm guilty of this. Should we try and put coaching into a harsher and wider context? Hmm, Nick, what do you mean by harsher context? Wider, I sort of understand that built around groups and larger communities, but what do you mean by harsher? Would you like to just specify it in the chat box? And uh, in the meantime, I would like to take on to that point that both of you have resonated in your sharing that, uh, that yes, change sort of happens. And yes, we, you know, could see our life or the way we are built up. We do go through change either one way or another. Even if we don't have any support, somehow human life is such that we somehow find some inner reservoir of strength or some resources to go through it. But what happens is probably quite a lot of wear and tear in the process, which if we have a timely and right kind of support in the moment, could be taken away from and then the journey would be like more pleasant and more smoother and and you know in a way it sort of reminded me of something some stories that I've heard in Taoism Taoism which is like you know uh, in China it's a, it's a life philosophy which is like living which takes a lot of inspiration for living through the nature and nature's processes. Like nature has its own way and ease and changes sort of happen in nature also, one after another, different seasons sort of change. And the transition seems to be happening so smoothly that we don't even realize like when these shifts have sort of happened. And when I heard you both, you know, sharing your respective experiences, it felt to me that in that somehow, somewhere, uh, we've sort of forgotten to shift that naturally, that there's a lot of that inner resistance that happens in us while we are moving and changing. So... I want to bring us back to, again, this uh, focusing on the status quo, like what really sets us, first of all, in a particular status? 
that we lose this malleability to shift and change. If you can just reflect from your own life journey and share a bit around that. I would say it has a lot to do with um, society's expectation at large, um, whether it's your, your family, the environment you grew up in, the work environment too, where there's an expectation. If we take the work environment, for example, there's an expectation that you go up the ladder and um, it's, it's sort of there and it's not really questioned. Um, and I know there's an expression that says something like, uh, make sure you go up the right ladder. Um, <laughs> um, and it's, I, I think it's what, it puts us on, on, on rails really, that's the direction to go. That's what everybody does. Um, and it's very, very hard to go off the rails, off the, uh, the, the, the path most traveled. It's, it's tiring, you, you have to have discussion with people, there's disagreement, you have to experiment because there's no one really showing you the way, the road is not paved, it's uh, you're walking in, in the bush and you have to create your own, your own path. It's, it is difficult and do we want to have a difficult life? I mean, I think it goes back to what it is you want in life. I know, and I can only speak for myself, I've, I've always wanted to do something different uh, than the norm in my own means. It doesn't have to be something big. Um, not quite sure where that comes from, <laughs> but it's always been in me. And I've always uh, found it difficult to, to fit in existing groups. Um, and I certainly wouldn't try to change myself to, just for the sake of fitting in. Um, so you sort of fit in for some things and then for other things you don't and you try to balance it through your life and you're more or less successful. It depends on the environment you're in. And it's, it's I, I think it's what caused us to yeah, tend to follow the norm because it's easier, it's less stress, it's, it's less argument with the people we, we love, especially you know, family and close friends. It's... Um, and yes, it's it's easier, you know. Why why take the difficult road when there's one already made in front of you, um, unless you just want the difficult road for the sake of it? It's so interesting. It's so interesting. You're saying, and I also sort of resonated with B that we all crave to be different. We all crave to do something different, but we necessarily don't look at it in terms of difficult initially when we are aspiring. Mm -hmm. But choosing a different path may also mean that it's gonna be difficult path too. And are we ready essentially for the difficulty? Because nobody says in their dreams that, oh, I want a difficult life. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we are, are different and own unique, but difficult sort of comes along with it. <laughs> I, I would like to add here that we don't actually think how difficult it is to follow the path in front of us because the difficulties are more internal in that we have this uh, internal fight between what we do and our values, um, what we do and the strengths we have, and we end up doing something we're not that strong in, so we we do things we don't like, for example, or we have to keep figuring out things um, and we don't do what we're good at. So we don't think of, we think of how difficult it is to follow a different road, to create your own, your own road or your own yeah. path in the bush, for example. But we don't think so much about how difficult it is to follow the, the ready-made road because it, it's all... I guess it's more internal difficulties and they don't, they're maybe easier to hide to other people. Um, I, I don't have a background in psychology. I'm sure there's a, a lot going on there, but I think we forget about that difficulty. We just leave it aside when it is probably as difficult to follow the path made for others than to create your own path. I mean, interesting. Thank you for bringing that home, Christelle. Dr. Bell, over to you. Yeah, I know. I really like that uh, road less traveled analogy because I, I 
th that really resonates with me as well. Um, but I, when I think of the word status quo, I think of, of self-identity and, and, and comfort. And I think over a career, you, you kind of go, okay, I know how to do that. I know how to do that. I've done that. I know how to do that. Done. And then you, you sort of settle into that. Okay, maybe this is just the way it's supposed to be. And, and then some of us have that little voice talking to us saying, you know, there's more, there's more, there's something more here. What are you missing? What's more? And, and that kind of goes back to the road less traveled. And, and it, I have learned at least when, when I keep getting tapped on the shoulder enough times and finally, you know, I, I stumble and I haven't listened. I go back and I go, okay, what am I, what is it that's calling me? And and I think for, for all of us um, to sort of be able to step out of your comfort zone and, and maybe into that great unknown, which to me was this, and, and I think as well with Cristal and probably also with you, Kamal, um, you, you know, you're entering into a whole new world of discovery. And I think that that's, I think that's where life is. I think it's, you know, life is, 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 is well on the journey, is, you know, just like when I was a young doctor, that was life. It was exciting. And, and, and that's great, you know, but, but just listen, listening to yourself. Um, and, and I think as you, as you do a better job at that, you start to make those little incremental decisions that keep moving you forward, you know, with the machete knife and that, you know, carving out your own path. And, and, um, and then it's a lot of fun when you meet people that are also on that path with you. So um, kind of like being here today. Awesome. Thank Actually, you. I, I'd like to add something that just came to my mind is we, we're talking about creating our own path following the path, the, the road less traveled. I think it's also important to think about the circumstances we're in, and we're all in different circumstances. Some of them we can go around, uh, and some of them they really obstacle or they dealing with them means changing the, the path you want to, to follow. But I think it, it's important. It's a reality aspect of it. Um, I mean, COVID obviously is a, is, is a big circumstance right now that it's there. Uh, we deal with it in different ways depending on our on our situation but we have to deal with it we can't just ignore it um i'm thinking if you have um a young child if you have to look after a young child or, or somebody else if you have certain responsibilities uh, financial responsibility for example you, you have to make decision you can't it's not just about what it is we want to do we have to look at what's around us um what's our circumstances, which one we are willing to push aside and which ones um, we're not because they are important and they alter, they may alter what we want to do or how we want to do it. I think it's important to keep that in mind. It's not just about a dream. Uh, we have to consider reality. And I think there was a comment about reality too in the, in the chat at one point. It's, yeah, it's, it's not just living in a dream and going for just your dream. You have to, I, I think you have to link it to your own reality and how much you are willing to do or what it is you're not willing to do. And that's different for each of us. Can I, can I just add in there too, Absolutely. Christelle, that, that what you're saying is, is really true what a lot of people are doing is they're shouldering more responsibility. They're, they're having to pay attention to all of those other issues and they're wanting to do everything else as well. And I think that that's contributing to this sort of overwork, this burnout thing. And, um, and I think as a coach, you can help people to learn what is imp really important here for you moving forward what isn't so important you know and and i think that bit of reflection can also help when these unexpected things happen in our lives that that do take us away amazing and taking away from both of you you know and the 
word that you brought in of about the self identity like what is it that we associate ourselves with do we associate ourselves with our dreams or our responsibilities our aspirations or different value sets and then we sort of start to think that oh yeah this is my identity and this is the fixed thing about it that is something we're just showing up to me through our conversation is what sort of get a fixed and comfortable in in one particular status and it's so inherently what's showing up to me is that to challenge the status quo is to recreate a whole identity about self go into that space of self and see that is this all and i think this also speaks to that when you say that i had a tap on the shoulder that is that all i am or will that all i could be right it's like so trying to break out of our own little self identity bubbles that we have formed and see that what more could i be could i be this or could i be that as well yeah i think and that go on come on no no go ahead crystal uh, yeah, yeah i want to say i think it's important to realize who we are really deep inside and remove what comes from uh, the the external environment but also realizing that we change we evolve with time uh, with the experiences we go through with age so we also change internally and it's kind of hard we have to keep up with ourselves <laughs> and it means that what we may have really wanted to do when we were 20 years old is we're not interested in that anymore or we have a different view on it now and that's that is that's not a failure that's that's we change and we we change our interests change or uh, sense of purpose change and it's it is hard work to keep up with ourselves and that change while we're trying to uh, work on a goal that may be shifting on its own too <laughs> yeah that's so true either it's shifting or some disruption suddenly comes and shifts it all together and what comes at the center of all of this is this i is sense of self like who really i am like all of a sudden i as we have got to know ourselves completely changes and becomes sort of irrelevant in the moment and we need to shift yeah i would like to take back to nick's question because he's explained what he means by harsher so he said that harsh reality of climate change unsustainable nature of extractive growth economics competition between social groups leading to popularism or truth that yes absolutely thank you nick and yeah i think i think all of these questions are valid and and the way i look at all of these uh what nick calls as harsher realities i'll say just realities of the current lifetime in the depth of all of these question is also some way or some identity that we've sort of created around self i think that all of the questions the questions of climate change the unsustainable nature of extractive growth economics and all of these questions can be brought down to the level of i like how we all individually and collectively have learned to see ourselves and this take me to what you shared crystal about the expectations like what do we, i expect from myself as an individual and what do we expect from each other collectively what are these indicators with which we sort of identify self do we identify self with all kind of material growth and prosperity that somebody achieves do we celebrate oh somebody's own uh, a big car or a big mansion then of course it directly leads to this unsustainable nature of extractive growth economics or are we really celebrating or appreciating oh this person is so kind he did this for somebody or did that for somebody 
what are our markers of identifying self with? I think all of these larger questions about our world today can be drilled down to the level of self. And Christelle, at the moment when you took it over, that's precisely what I was about to say, is that to know ourselves. So it basically comes down to the question of who really I am. Yeah, it goes back to who we are, our values, um, what purpose is for us, what's, what's, what gives us a sense of purpose, and how it interacts with with the world um i mean we uh, i haven't kept track of where the um the, the everybody is uh, located geographically so we're all in different location we we go through different um natural event and man man uh, man-made events um we are in different situations so we deal with them in a different way even if we are in the same place so it's it's an interconnection and it's not something I've been you know, thinking about or reflecting on a lot. Um, I know there's a connection there, but I can't, can't really develop on it. I don't know if Dr. Beale has a better <laughs> explanation. <laughs> the only thing I can say is that <clears throat> I think we all have a choice what we think about. Um, and we really become what we think about. So. Um, if someone is passionate about climate change, is it a huge problem? Well, do what you can, but don't keep worrying about it. Like, do what you need to do to, to feel that sense of, okay, I'm doing my part. But then let the rest of it go. Because some of these things, like the weather, you can't control. Um, um, and there's so much negativity in the world that you know it, it, it can just consume you. And I, and I I feel that um, we are so plugged into when we started out with the internet. Here I'm coming back as a good coach here, talking about something that happened a long time ago. But you know we're so we have this insatiable need to be connected every moment of the day. And I and I got to the point where I kind of went, well, why? Why why is that important? And I think if we all kind of ask that of ourselves, we'll probably look and see, well, there's some things maybe I don't really need to be worried about all the time. I don't need to have CNN on in the background and see what's happening here, there, and everywhere every single moment of the day. Um, but that's just kind of my was kind of my take on what what this conversation was uh, was 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 speaking to me. Wonderful, thank you, Dr. Bell. Thank you, and we're just coming to the, the top of our hours conversation. Didn't even realize it's already one hour. Uh, as a last thing, uh, like a parting uh, question for uh, not just the panelists but also for all the participants, is like what shows up in your spaces like what is this one thing which you would like to commit to change you know what is one such status in this world or in your respective lives which is like set and where you want to see some shift that you are committed to thank you yeah. Everybody can put that in the chat box also. We'd like to hear from you while we hear from Christelle and Dr. Bill. For me, what comes to mind is the word empowerment. And it's a word I'm being attracted, attracted to at the moment for myself to, to keep going uh, for what, what I want for myself and based on my own life and my own circumstances. But also to see more people... Um, being empowered to to follow their own paths to create their own life and i'm especially thinking about the younger generation that i saw coming in when i was still working in the construction industry uh, they have so much more i say access to different uh, perspectives than we had uh, because of the internet and cell phone and and yet i i saw a lot um 
they fall into the, uh, they, they follow the, the career path in front of them. I mean, it is hard when you're very young and you start in a career that the first thing that comes to mind is probably not to create your own, to do your own things at work, but it, it's having more people feeling empowered to slowly, you know, one, one step at a time, bring more of their own way of doing things or going in their own direction at work and outside of work, of course. But I, I, what comes to mind is the word empowerment for me at the moment. Thank you. Dr. Bill. Um, so I think my kind of buzzword is, is mental fitness. Um, it, because it encompasses the whole concept of, you know, learning to take care of yourself first, um, develop your own, you know, I think emotional intelligence can be taught to people. Um, and, and I think as, as that self-awareness rises, I think everything else rises along with it in your life, not only your personal life, but your professional life. And, um, and it flavors the decisions that you're going to make along the way. So that's, that's kind of where it, what, what that means to me. Thank you, Dr. Bill. And for me, uh, it's words, something to do with words, and basically maybe reframing, reshifting, or redefining or clarifying the, the meaning of the words, which are more liberating and energizing and less sort of, you know, bounding to us. And I see a lot of people are also sharing. Uh, Ganesh also mentioned that something which I just want to, uh, he said that all of us can do our part in climate change, avoid plastic, get more fresh air, avoid air cones as much as possible. Ganesh, that's a very good idea. But the thing about status quo shifts and changes is that everybody's changes, nobody's change. So I think what we, what I personally would think is like, what is it that I can do? What it is that I commit to do? And that's a little bit around the language for me is to just help my clients also start to think on the perspective of I, like what do I commit to? What do I want to see as a change? And not in a very egotistical manner, but a really committed ownership accountability manner. <laughs> So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining us and sharing your thoughts. It's so beautiful to see all of your ideas. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, Crystal and Dr. Bill, for taking time today and letting us peep into your journey, mm -hmm. your challenges with the status quo ships and where you're committed to do in future. Right. So. My thank pleasure. you so much. Thank, thank you, Komal, and thank you to everyone who's been uh, listening in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. So we'll see you thank next you. week. Bye, everybody. Good night, good day, wherever you are. <laughs>